Hey friends, welcome to Power Coat Music. In this presentation, we're going to talk about how to conquer and effectively use an audio compressor in your home recording studio. If you are new to recording or unsure about what audio compression is and how to use it, then you've landed in the right place. So grab your coffee, your tea, sit back and relax and stay with me. By the end of this presentation, you will view your audio compressor in a whole new light and understand how to make it work for you. Now we're going to cover in this presentation the following three topics regarding audio compressors, which are the misconceptions, the controls, and the application, or that is how to apply audio compression to your music. But first, I want to ask you to please check out my YouTube homepage to view all of my videos that are carefully organized by subject. Also, if you find you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel a great deal. And now, back to the presentation. Keep in mind that there are basically two types of audio signal compressors. There are hardware compressors that either are standalone units or feature, uh, or they're a feature on another device such as a hardware mixer. And there are software compressor plugins that are generally used within digital audio workstation software applications, better known as DAWs. But first, let's, you know, quickly discuss what audio compression is for those who aren't sure or just don't know. Dynamic range compression is a form of audio signal processing. And this type of compression involves reducing the difference between the loudest and softest parts of an audio signal. It is widely used in music production, broadcasting, and live sound reinforcement to make audio sound more balanced and consistent. Dynamic range compression helps to prevent distortion. It enhances clarity and ensures consistent loudness across audio tracks or in live performances. This can take your recordings to broadcast level quality, that is, if done skillfully. Let's begin by attempting to clarify some of the misconceptions associated with audio compressors. There are a lot. Audio compression is a widely misunderstood topic, particularly because the term can refer to two different concepts. Uh, the first concept is data compression and, you know, dynamic range compression, or should I say data compression and dynamic range compression is what they refer to a lot of times. You can, you can mix, people mix those up. Now, data compression of audio reduces the amount of data required to store or transmit an audio file making it more efficient for storage and streaming. In this presentation, we'll focus on dynamic range audio compression. So, uh, let's start with five misconceptions that surround it. The first is that dynamic range compression ruins audio quality. Some people believe this. Now, in reality, when used properly, dynamic range compression can enhance clarity by balancing the loud and quiet parts of an audio signal. The problem arises when compression is overused, leading to distortion or listener fatigue. Next is, you know, the next misconception I should say is compression is only for professional audio production. Now in reality, compression is used everywhere from podcasts to live sound systems, to improve consistency and intelligibility. The third misconception is compression makes everything louder. <laughs> well, in reality, compression reduces the dynamic range, making quiet parts louder relative to the loud parts. However, actual loudness depends on the makeup gain or output applied after the compression. The next misconception is that compression is bad for live performances. In reality, compression is essential in live sound to prevent sudden loud peaks from damaging equipment or being unpleasant for listeners. And finally, the last misconception is that compression eliminates dynamics entirely. Hmm. Well, in reality, if 
properly used, compression controls dynamics without removing them entirely, preserving musical expression while ensuring a balanced sound. We'll move on to some of the key characteristics of dynamic range audio compression. Generally, when using audio compressors, you will need a basic understanding of the following. The first is the threshold. The threshold is the level at which the compressor starts working. Keep this in mind that any audio above this level will be compressed. Next is the ratio. This determines how much the audio is compressed once it exceeds the threshold. For instance, four to one means that every four decibels above the threshold, the output increases by only one decibel. And with this, a higher ratio means stronger compression. Let's move on to the attack and release. They control how quickly the compression starts and stops. Now with the attack, this controls how quickly the compressor responds to audio that exceeds the threshold. Use a fast attack for sharp sounds like snare drums and a slower attack for vocals to maintain natural dynamics. The release. This sets how quickly the compressor stops affecting the signal after it falls below the threshold. Use a fast release for quick recovery and a slow re release for smoother transitions. The makeup gain or the output, this boosts the overall volume to compensate for the reduction caused by compression. Let's talk about the knee. This is interesting. The knee, this determines how gradually the compression is applied to the signal that approaches the, as it approaches the threshold. Now a soft knee, if you hear this term, applies compression more smoothly, while a hard knee applies it more abruptly. Yeah. Finally, let's discuss how to apply audio compression to your music. I believe that the most important part about learning to use audio compressors after you understand the controls and terminology and the misconceptions is to experiment with your hardware unit and your software plugin and or I should say your software plugin. Here are some tips for applying compression to your music that should get you going on the right track. Let's start with vocals. Now for vocals, try setting the threshold to capture peaks. Try using a ratio range of around two to one to four to one. Try starting with a medium attack of around 10 to 20 milliseconds and a medium release around 100 to 200 milliseconds. Try using a makeup gain or output to bring the level back up after this. Now for drums, try using a higher ratio of around four to one to six to one to control transients. Try adjusting the attack and release to emphasize or tame the punchiness of drum sounds. Now for mastering, a lot of people are interested in this. For mastering, try using gentle settings. For instance, use a low ratio and a high threshold to preserve dynamics while evening out the mix. Also, trying a ratio of around five, a 1.5 to one or two to one as this is common for mastering. Also fine tune by ear, avoid over compression. It can make the sound dull and lifeless and unnatural. Listen for artifacts like pumping or distortion, especially with fast attack and release settings. Use your bypass to compare compressed and uncompressed audio. Also, this is critical, experiment, experiment, experiment. Try parallel compression, that is blend compressed audio with the original signal for more punch while retaining natural dynamics. Try using multiband compression, that is compress specific frequency ranges separately. Do this separately for precise control, like for example, managing bass without affecting vocals. 
Well, that's a wrap. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen to join our group. We have new presentations coming out every 7 to 14 days and leave a comment in the comments section below and with this check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and TikTok. While you're here, listen to some of the music and check out the playlist because they're designed just for you. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.